Hey, here are five stupid things I've noticed since last time. Pope bashes gays during Christmas message. Pope Benedict gave his customary Christmas address at the Vatican last week and decided to rally the troops the best way he knows how, by spending a small portion of his faith's most treasured holy day talking shit about gay people. Benedict called efforts to legalize same-sex marriage attacks on the traditional family, and he accused gay people of denying their natures, which, according to Benedict, noted sexual psychologist that he is, are determined exclusively by their sex organs, which are chosen for them by God himself. And we all know God never makes bad choices, right? Maryland Trolley Company closes wedding business to avoid same-sex couples. In my home state of Maryland, same-sex marriage is now as legal as a blowjob from your first cousin, which has led Matt Grubbs, the owner of Discover Annapolis Tours, to end his company's service of holding weddings aboard their famous old-fashioned trolleys. Grubbs is opposed to same-sex marriage, you see, a position which he attributes to his Christianity. In a letter to a potential customer, Grubbs also suggests that the state legislature should amend the same-sex marriage law to allow private vendors like him to exempt themselves from having to perform same-sex marriages if it would conflict with their religious convictions. And you know what? I agree with him. Why should people be forced to obey non-discrimination laws that protect the rights of people they don't like? Sandy Hook Conspiracy Theories Hope you're not tired of talking about the mass murder of children yet, because the next three are all about that. Before the parents of the dead in Newtown, Connecticut had even been able to bury their children, conspiracy theories about the shooting had begun to appear on the internet. The silliest of these was the one that implied some vague, sinister connection between the shooting and the film The Dark Knight Rises. Oh, did you see that map of Gotham City? There's a Sandy Hook on it. How could they have known about that? You know how they love to leave clues to what they're gonna do, whoever they are. And by far the most offensive was the one that sought to cast suspicion on Robbie Parker, whose six-year-old daughter was among the murdered children at the Sandy Hook School. Parker's body language when addressing the media the day after his daughter was murdered struck some as a little fishy. What was he reading? Why was he smiling when he walked out? Why did he only appear to get visibly upset when he started talking to the cameras? Hmm? You know, if you can watch the YouTube video that asks these questions about this man whose child was just murdered and not want to take a baseball bat to the skull of the piece of shit who made it, you are either a way better person than I am or a way, way worse one. Religious right blames Sandy Hook shooting on secularism. Speaking of way worse people than me, Mike Huckabee came out shortly after the Sandy Hook shooting and blamed it on the lack of God in public schools. And he was far from the only one. It seemed like in the days that followed, every conservative Christian asshole within shouting distance of a camera or a microphone expressed similar sentiments. And you know what? As much as it pains me as an atheist to admit this, they're right. All of these horrible acts of violence, these mass shootings, they are the result of us driving God out of public schools. I mean, think about it. Just consider the evidence. We've all heard the story of how Andrew Kehoe had planned to murder his wife and set off a dynamite bomb in the basement of the elementary school in Bath Township, Michigan in 1927 until he was stopped by the very hand of God. And then a few decades later, the Supreme Court goes and outlaws prayer in school, and now, look what we've got. Luckily, of course, that Supreme Court ruling only applied to public schools. God does still intervene to prevent shootings in churches and religious schools, which is why those things never, ever happen anywhere. The Cowardice of the NRA Several days of total silence, followed by the promise of a meaningful response, followed by a press conference one week later where National Rifle Association CEO Wayne LaPierre blamed everything in the universe but guns for the shooting. Violent movies, violent video games, mental illness, that 
essentially is the NRA's response to the Sandy Hook shooting. And actually, I misspoke, because LaPierre did blame guns for the shooting, the fact that there weren't nearly enough of them around. The only major policy proposal to emerge from the NRA press conference on December 21st was the proposal to place an armed guard inside every school in the United States. It is the only proven method, said LaPierre, to prevent these kinds of mass shootings, completely ignoring the several high-profile, high-casualty mass shooting events which have happened in locations where armed guards were present. The only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun, LaPierre, an adult, actually said to a room full of adults. The questions of how the bad guy got the gun in the first place or why anyone needs to own such a firearm are apparently questions that our nation's biggest, most influential, most powerful gun rights lobbying organization is not interested in exploring. The right of any citizen to own any given firearm trumps the right of society to create and enforce sane gun laws. It says so in the Constitution. So I'm told. The hardest part is only picking five. Catch you next time.